Regardless of whether you play golf or not, most people who drive by a golf course are taken aback by the natural beauty and color of the green grass. With me is Keith Miller, Executive Director of Montgomery County Revenue Authority. Welcome to the show. Thank you. First of all, tell us a little bit about this property and what makes it unique. Well, it's, it's great. We're at the Needwood Golf Course and we are on the Executive Nine. Uh, at the Needwood Golf Course. What makes it unique is that we started a new program out here this year. We are uh, doing an educational nine holes. So what that means for us is that we're taking the opportunity to educate people and golfers on the environment and the impacts that golf makes on the environment and how we can do a better job at eliminating those impacts. What made you guys decide to make this an educational golf course about going green? You know, over the years, the golf course industry really hasn't had a good uh, reputation, although I don't think that's, that's correct. And a lot of people don't understand what the golf course industry does for the environment and how we have a positive impact on it. So last year, in working with our director of agronomy, John Lobenstein, we came up with the idea of taking this individual golf course and using it as a way for us to experiment on new ways that we can educate people on what we are currently doing, but also test what we can do in the future to make us greener and better. Well, let's also mention some of those positive things that the golf course does do. It does give wildlife habitation and yes. can you mention a few other things that it actually does? Sure, absolutely. Uh, the Montgomery County Revenue Authority, we control about 25 acres, 2,500 acres of land in Montgomery County as golf courses. And of that, 10% of that land is dedicated to wildlife. So it's natural. We do not treat it at all. Right over our shoulder here on the golf course is a big area that is natural. And what that means is that the grass grows long. It creates a natural environment for the animals to uh, kind of um, do their thing and, and kind of coexist with the golfers and really create a nice, nice place for them. It's a nice, positive you know, thing that you do that I think goes understated yeah. too often. So what kind of reaction have you got from the golfers and the fact that they're learning as they golf? You know, it's, been, it's, it's, it's really been very beneficial for the golfer and for us. Um, the golfer has really been surprised. They've, they've come away, I think, understanding a lot more about what we're doing and what the golf course industry does. And we are using it to learn a lot. We're trying to learn and look to the future and understanding what else we can do. So we're trying experiments to uh, introduce warm season grasses, which use less water, less chemicals, less pesticides. Uh, we're using it better try, uh, try better water management practices, so we're using less water. And so I think mutually we're, we're learning from it. And the golfer is realizing that and they're embracing it. So it's really been great. This is basically the next wave of the environment because you, you mean you use water, you use fertilizer, and you yeah. do all these things to go green and it makes a huge difference. I mean, water alone, don't you save a ton of water just by the practices that you do here? Yeah, absolutely. What we do, instead of broadcasting water just randomly around a golf course, what we actually do is do a lot of hand watering. So we'll put guys out on the golf course with hoses and just hand water where we want to um, be very specific with. And we save a tremendous amount of water uh, each year and we reduced our water capacity and water usage, I think, last year by over 800,000 gallons of, of water. So. Well, this is a real terrific opportunity to, you know, demonstrate real environmental leadership. So thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Later in the show, we'll talk with John Lobenstein, Director of Agronomy. But first, let's go to the Green Festival and find out what's working in your community. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we're at Kneewood Golf Course, where we've been getting some great information about some of the different practices used on this golf course. Joining us is John Lobenstein, Director of Agronomy for Montgomery County Golf. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. If you can please start off by telling us a little bit about your management for water conservation on the property. Okay. Uh, in the golf industry, when we talk about best management practices for conserving water, um, the biggest thing that we try to do is a lot of hand watering, um, especially in the summertime. Uh, we have an irrigation system, um, but you know, we, we, when we focus on particular areas of the golf course that we can uh, dedicate labor to just hand watering, uh, we use a lot less water. Um, this is as opposed to, I guess, years ago where you just watered everything, regardless of if the whole course needed it or not, right? That's correct. Um, you know, there's a number of benefits, not only from water conservation, but also in the, the health of the turf, that if we just give the water exactly where it's needed, uh, with a hose rather than using this irrigation system and watering a whole area. Um, we save water and we have healthier turf. Now did the golf community have 
you know, some stress or were they asked, did they ask you guys to do this? I mean, is this something that you decided on or how did you come about? Well, this is something that's um, been discussed in the industry for some time. Um, you know, water restrictions are not something that's typical for this area. Um, however, on the, the West Coast and in uh, some more arid climates, uh, water is uh, definitely something that's uh, in high demand. There's a little uh, more pressure on that side, I guess. That's right. And, and golf courses are, you know, when you look at the big picture, we, we use less than 1% of the water uh, in, of, of the country's water, but um, there are... Uh, less than 1% uh, is still a lot, because I've read somewhere there's 300,000 gallons on average for each golf course a day. That's quite a lot. Yeah, when you, when you put a number like that, it really averages the entire country. Um, the West Coast and other arid, arid climates um, are typically using a lot more water, desert golf courses, et cetera. In this area, we use less. Um, our golf courses average anywhere from uh, 10 to 20 million gallons a year that's drawn from the ponds on our golf course. Uh, the ponds collect runoff from um, streets, from the golf course, uh, from the community, and we use that water to irrigate the turf rather than purchasing uh, water. That's great. There's a little experiment going on back here. Tell us a little bit about this grass and what makes this, you know, unique. Okay. One of the things we're doing at Needwood Golf Course in, in this particular case is we're looking at uh, warm season grasses like Bermuda grass, zoysia grass, um, are typically used in southern climates uh, where, they're, um, where they grow more vigorously year round. Um, but those grasses uh, are characterized by very low pesticide, uh, fertilizer, and water use. So this is a plot here. Um, a Bermuda grass that we established um, for a few reasons. First of all, how can we establish this grass keeping the golf course open? How can we convert to this type of grass and what are the benefits? So what we saw this year is that this this turf needed basically no irrigation. Um, it needed no fungicides. Um, all we had to do was fertilize to get it started and it uses about a quarter of the amount of fertilizer that a typical cool season grass would use on, a, on an annual basis. But this is just an experiment for now. You're still learning what works and what doesn't work. That's right. Well, let's take a closer look at some of the different practices you have on the, for, on the okay. field. Okay. <laughs> Come on. Please tell us a little bit about what's going on here, John. Okay. Um, this is a, a tea box that we've turned into a research plot okay. by um, establishing three different types of grasses here. We have zoysia grass in the back, we have rye grass here in the middle, and Bermuda grass up front. And what we're seeing is how these plots uh, stand up to traffic, uh, what kind of inputs are required as far as fertilizer and, and water, and uh, just how they, how they stand up uh, in a real, real life see, situation. You can see the main difference just looking at it. Yep, uh, and what you're seeing now is the, the, the warm season grasses that we're using start to go a little bit off color this time of year, uh, which is one of the challenges of using, you know, trying to convert to these types of grasses to use less chemicals, less fertilizer. Well, six months out of the year, they're, they're dormant and they really can't recover from traffic. Um, it's not appealing uh, as much for people to come play on this surface. So uh, that's something that we're hoping to you know, continue to look at. How, how can we make this work? I guess you can't do this on the entire golf course. Well, I think this is just the tip of the iceberg. You know, we're, we're doing small areas this year as our first year of these experiments. Um, as, as we continue on uh, with this research, uh, we'll look at making these areas larger and doing more uh, research uh, and kind of just trying to learn more about them. Now, you, when you talk about what you use, is there, for, like the fertilizer and the pesticide, is that all organic? Um, much of the fertilizer we use is organic. It's a uh, pasteurized poultry manure product. Um, it's, it's basically chicken waste that comes from uh, Purdue chicken out on the eastern shore. But, you know, that, that product, is a, it's a nice slow-release nitrogen source. Um, it, it helps um, establish good healthy turf. It has lots of micronutrients. Uh, it's a big, it's good total package fertilizer for us. And you said something about, we mentioned earlier that going completely organic is kind of impossible for a mid-Atlantic area. Can you explain a little bit about why? Yep. Because uh, it sounds like such a great thing to do, so. Yeah, a, a totally organic program is certainly something that we're looking into. There are courses um, in other environments in the country, like up in, uh, up in New York, um, other parts of the country. The mid-Atlantic uh, is really an area that's uh, a tough place to grow grass because of the, the very high humidity, um, because of the high nighttime temperatures. Uh, all, these types of things promote a lot of disease and, and is why we have to make sure um, that we're you know, on top of our game uh, for managing the turf. I, I read somewhere that you saved over $30,000 in fertilizer costs alone just last year. 
Is that uh, right? With fertilizer and some chemical applications, uh, we saved about over $30,000. Uh, simply, uh, you know, another way that we can uh, look at reducing uh, the cost that it takes to maintain a golf course is looking at our fairway acreage, for example. Uh, most of our golf courses have 20, 25, even 30 acres of fairways. Well, we, we took, uh, for example, a Poolsville golf course. Uh, he used to have 32 acres of fairways. And just by recontouring, by bringing the sides in, giving a little shape, um, he cut out almost 11 acres of fairways just at that facility alone. Sounds great. And this way you save money and you're helping the environment. So it sounds pretty good. Okay, you talk about all the pesticides and fertilizers and some of them are organic. Is it harmful? I mean, is it a harmful thing? Are there some that are not safe for the environment? I mean, are we still worried about runoff and do you have to wear those protective suits when applying these items? Okay, yeah, you certainly bring up a number of uh, concerns that um, a lot of people when they think about golf courses um, have a pretty negative stereotype about golf courses. If you think back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, there was a lot of products with heavy metals. There's a lot of products that were really pretty dangerous that were used on golf courses. Um, what people don't know about is today, a golf course product that's used is approved by the EPA for use on golf courses. It's completely safe when it's used according to label. To label. Um, and uh, these products have typically gone uh, undergone 10 years of testing, $150 million of research just to get one product on the market. So the, the chemical companies uh, are doing everything they can to make their products safer, have lower use rates, um, higher dilutions of water, minimizes runoff. Um, you know, ov overall, uh, chemicals have come a long way from where they used to be. Well, John, it seems like you guys are definitely ahead of the game. So thank you for being an environmental leader. Hmm. Thank you for having me. For more information about Montgomery County Golf, visit www.montgomerycountygolf.com. Well, that's our show. If you have any questions or would like to advertise a green event, email us at thinkgreen at mct-tv.org. You can also check out our website at www.accessmontgomery.tv. Be sure to tune in for upcoming episodes where we'll explore more ways you can go green and what local organizations are doing that can help. I'm Susan Stark. Thank you for watching. Now, where did I put my golf clubs? Hmm.